podcast. Sorry to break it to some of y'all again, but it's going to be another solo version of the show this evening with Chad MIA. Uh, he's out of town and Scott is dealing with a family issue. It's a good thing, not a bad thing, but Scott is unavailable tonight. So it's just me and me alone. We're going to go over the news cycle today, Monday, March 25th, which includes George Payton and Sean Payton, the Broncos GM and head coach, speaking publicly at the NFL's owners meetings in Orlando, Florida. A lot to cover on today's show about that meeting, about the Broncos next quarterback, the draft, a lot of stuff to get to. I see BK saying, whoa, on time today. Yeah, when it's just one of us. Um, we tend to uh, start things pretty, pretty smoothly on time. So just enjoy it. BK it won't last forever. BK saying there's an echo. Let me know guys, if there's an echo on your end, if it's just, if it's just BK, I'll try to remedy that on my end. I want to say hello to some of you who've been waiting. Uh, I see David Yunkin. I see, uh, M L B L E text prep. I see William Catalano DTR. Uh, who else? Kevin Gray, DVA, Dylan Von Arks. Appreciate you as always, my brother. String Guy, Mike Woodward. Who else we got here on this beautiful Monday? I think that'll do it. We got Michaela Israel in the building. We got Joe Anthony. We have Kathy Lund. We have Phil McLaughlin as always. Anyway, guys, I think we're caught up. Phil says the sound is good. Doug Tesler uh, asking about a Minnesota Vikings trade. Again, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, try to get to as many questions as I can tonight with no producer and no co-host. I don't want to keep vamping; it's been two minutes, so let's just dive right in, shall we? So, like I mentioned earlier, George Payton, Sean Payton talked at the NFL's owners' meetings today. Again, they were asked about the quarterback at uh, 12 overall, or maybe even in a trade up, who they like. Sean Payton did not give much away, but. He did say it's realistic for the Broncos to move up for a quarterback, whether that's number four, number eight, number six, number three, number two. We don't know. What's up, Michaela? The Duchess in the building. So good to see you. Uh, Facebook user, what's up? DTR, what's up? Uh, Money more, what's up? So he cracked open the door of trading up for a quarterback. It's not out of the realm of possibility, not in the least. They talked about J.J. McCarthy. It came out that the Broncos had a private workout with J.J. They were not at his pro day recently, but they had a four- to five-hour private throwing session with J.J. McCarthy. And it was interesting that Sean Payton spilled those beans because when George Payton went on, you know, to take the questions, it's not a podium, but he sat around a table, he goes, jokingly, I wish Sean didn't give that away or something along those lines. So it's obvious the Broncos really like J.J. McCarthy. I think they really like Bo Nix. I think they really like Drake May. How many of those guys are going to be available at 12? Maybe one, Bo Nix. They want, love, need to have Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. They are going to have to move up for him. But what Sean Payton was saying today is what I've said, Scott said, Chad said, pretty much everyone on the MHH network, that if they want their guy, they can find a way to get him. They will move up. It's not going to be for a lack of effort if the Broncos don't move up to get their quarterback. And and don't take it from me. Take it from Jeff Duncan, longtime Saints beat writer, said today he is going to go to hell and back to get his guy, Sean Payton. And again, if he doesn't, it won't be because they didn't try. Now, I don't know if that means for sure. Nothing's a certainty, but I don't know if that means there's any more probability that the Broncos move up to four or trade up for a quarterback. But we got confirmation today that it's at least rattling around the minds of decision makers in Dove Valley and that there's still a month left of the pre-draft process. They're getting closer to landing on their guy, their quarterback, Sean Payton's guy, most importantly. And if Sean Payton's guy is named Drake May, or J.J. McCarthy, do not be surprised if they do move up or at least try to move up. And if they do move up, as BK saying in the chat, goodbye PS2. Because you can move up to eight or maybe even six without surrendering PS2. But if you're going to want to move up to four to ensure that you get one of your guys from 12 to four, it's going to cost you PS2, your 2024 first, obviously, your 2025 number one, and probably your 2025 number two. 
Again, as David Yunkin's saying, they can't beat out Minnesota. We don't know what Minnesota is going to do, David. We, all we know are the rumors. And I don't cover the Vikings. I'm not as in tune with the Vikings' plans. I can only speak on the Broncos' plans. And Sean Payton peel back the curtain a little bit as to what the Broncos' plans could be next month. And I might be wrong. My read is that the first-round draft pick is boiled down to pretty much Drake May, McCarthy, or Bo Nix. The Broncos are going to come out of this first round, God willing, I'm speaking it, I'm manifesting it into reality. The Broncos are going to come out of the draft on day one with a shiny new rookie quarterback. Who that rookie is remains to be seen. I want to touch on, well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll intermingle. Again, no producer, no co-host tonight, so I guess I'll intermingle the chat uh, Kathy Lund saying, I feel like we're more than likely going to go Bo Nix, but what do I know? Kathy, you might be right. You might know more than me on this. You might have a better intuition or gut feeling. We'll find out, thankfully, soon enough. Michaela Parker, Sean has a big mouth. Uh, you know, he's he's very strategic, but sometimes it gets the best of him, and I think he lets his intrusive thoughts win, and they leak out loud. So we'll see if um, he was really giving anything away or he was just uh, – uh, what's it called? Giving us a smoke screen out to throw off the scent. Josh says, you drive me crazy, little man, but love you. Okay, Josh, I don't know what to tell you there. Guarantee you I'm bigger than you, though. Uh, the Broken Pirate says, if we stay at 12, who do you want? If we trade back, who do you want? Both, my answer to both questions, Broken Pirates is a quarterback. And I'm not saying draft one for the sake of drafting one. I sound like a broken record. I'm going to re be repeating this ad nauseum until the draft does roll around. If they say it's 12, I want either Nix or McCarthy if he's there, if they stay. If they trade back to the late teens, early 20s, and he's still there, I want Bo Nix. I want the Broncos. No, I need the Broncos to come out of the first round in late April next month with a quarterback. I'm not interested in the Brock Bowers or the Terry on Arnold's or the Joe Alts of the world. When you don't have your franchise guy under center, nothing else matters until you get that guy. And the Broncos need to get that guy no matter what. All right. I'm going to just uh, address again, intermingle some of the comments here. Sean Payton was asked how the Broncos can score more effectively in 2024. And I bring this up because it seemed like he took a little bit of a not so subtle jab at Russell Wilson quote from Sean Payton. Number one, we can't take as many sacks. If you looked at any of the data relative to what it does for your drives, that was a big thing that hurt us a year ago. Denver finished 27th in the NFL with 52 sacks allowed in 2023. So one of Russell Wilson's biggest problems as Broncos quarterback was taking unnecessary sacks, unnecessary abuse turnovers, it doesn't seem like Sean Payton's crying himself to sleep every night without Russell Wilson on the roster. So only reason I bring this up, he, Russell Wilson's a Pittsburgh Steeler now. I wish him well. He's no longer a Bronco. But it wasn't just the money as to why they benched Russ and then they cut Russ. They were never a good football pairing. And every quote that's come out since then has reaffirmed that. I got a question about the jerseys. That was the other piece of news that dropped today. The Broncos announced through their own Twitter account and through Damani Leach team president that new uniforms will be rolling out coming very soon for the 2024 season. They call it a full redesign, but everything I've heard and seen so far says the current uniforms mostly will be kept in place. There'll be smaller alterations like the, the mountain uh, the outline of the mountain on the collar or an updated D logo on the on the pant or on the hip, something like that. But it's not going to be redesigned helmets, not, no old school logos like what I'm wearing right now as the primary. So new jerseys are rolling out soon, but don't get your hopes up expecting something totally groundbreaking and new. It's going to be a lot of the same. On the field, unfortunately, in, in 2024. Michaela, the Duchess, hopping in. She's a magenta this evening. 49.99 super. We love you. And I'm speaking for Scott and uh, Chad right now. Michaela, thank you so much. Michaela says, having a five-hour interview with a player, I think it's very telling. I don't think they spent that long with any other quarterback. 
it is standard Michaela. I mean, it is notable because they did invest that much time into McCarthy. They don't have an unlimited number of pre-draft meetings. They can go on time is very precious. And also they made him kind of rethrow and redo everything that JJ did at his pro day. They put him through the ringer. So it's definitely notable, but it's not notable in the sense that the Broncos are the only team to do this with a quarterback or with McCarthy or with anybody else because they're not. Every team from the Bears with Caleb Williams on down go through these rigorous, um, extensive, long pre-draft workouts with players they have their eye on. Sometimes they have no intention of drafting these guys. They want to just see what they can do or do due diligence. Other times they're working him out because they have an eye on drafting him. Um, Michaela, my read on it is I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not in Sean Payton's head, unfortunately. I can't see the future. Everything we've heard for the last three months has indicated that Sean Payton really, really, really likes J.J. McCarthy. The word that was being thrown around last month was enamored. So I do think there's a big level of interest in J.J. McCarthy, but we don't know whether that interest is more than Bo Nix or Drake May or Michael Penix. That will come out as the draft gets closer. All right. Um... Nate says Herbert to the Vikings, Harbaugh drafts JJ. Again, we, we covered this in a pod a couple weeks ago. I, I get the fun speculation, but um, I think Harbaugh will give it a go with Herbert for one year and then maybe move off of him, though I still don't see that happening. Alex Salazar says, Zach, what are you most comfortable giving up for JJ or Drake May? It's a layered question, Alex. Great question. It makes me think. I've said this before, and I still hold true to it. I'm a big JJ guy. I like him a lot. He's, to me, he's behind Caleb Williams, QB2 for the Broncos in this class, behind Drake May. That being said, I would feel comfortable going up to eight or maybe, maybe six if it was open and if the Broncos just had to have McCarthy. I'd be comfortable with that. But the uh, my line in the sand is giving up PS2 as part of a trade-up. If you want to move up to four for uh, Drake May or in a in a weird alternate universe, if Caleb Williams dropped, fine. I would be okay parting with PS2. But I'm just not there yet giving up all of that capital, all of that ammo for J.J. McCarthy. And again, I, I know I sound hypocritical talking out of both sides of my mouth because I want J.J. I hope the Broncos do move up for J.J. if he is indeed their guy. I just don't want to go to four for him and give up PS2, multiple first round picks, et cetera. I would do that for Drake May. I would not, not quite there yet on JJ McCarthy. Great question though, Alex. I appreciate you asking. Um, we have Mike Edel, $20 super coming in orange. Appreciate you, Mike, supporting the podcast each and every single night. Never goes unnoticed and we love you for it. Hey, Zach, Sean is not going to tip his hand. This is the guy that pulled off an onside kick in the Super Bowl. I think PS2 would be worth two first rounders and two seconds, Jalen Ramsey. So maybe not so much capital. Yeah, I, I, in a vacuum, Mike, he's worth multiple first round picks. But they wouldn't be trading PS2 in a vacuum. The only way you move off of PS2 is in a package to move up one trade to go from 12 to four or three or whatever. So yeah, he is worth that much on his own. The problem is it's not on his own and the team the Broncos would be trading with, let's say Arizona, they know how desperate the Broncos are to get their quarterback. It might not be a case where PSU, it's it's not enough. They want multiple first rounders and PS2. And that's why to my previous comment, I'm okay doing that for a Caleb Williams or a Drake May. I am not quite there yet on uh, doing it for JJ McCarthy. And Keeping it specific to PS2, I'll say this as well. If they have no true intention on dealing Sertan, either at the draft or after the draft, you might as well just lock him down. The, the cornerback market is going to get higher and higher and more expensive and more expensive. If you see him as a foundational piece of the team uh, for five, six, seven, eight years, just give him the contract now. You have the cap room. It would send a good message to the locker room that we do pay some players. We're not cutting everyone, and we're going to build around on defense this stud cornerback. So that's my read on the PS2 thing. Like, I hope that kind of answered your question. 
Uh, DTR hopping in. Appreciate you. $10 super. If the Broncos end up going after Knicks as their guy, would you like to see them maneuver to pick up more picks this year to build a team more quickly or be patient and protect draft capital? Let me read that. So I kind of, I want to answer this correctly. Would you like to see them maneuver to pick up more picks? So I'm if you're assuming the Broncos are trading down, to get Bo Nix, or I, I'm not quite understanding DCR what you're saying here. I'll answer it this way, and hopefully it answers what you're what you're asking me. If they do want Bo Nix and they think they can get him at 18, 19, 20, whatever, they can move down in the first round and still get Bo Nix. I would prefer to pick up the capital because the Broncos are badly in need of a second round pick. This year, more than most other draft classes, the second round is absolutely loaded. So if they can move down and pick up a second, I am all for it. But if they think another team behind them, like the Raiders at 13 or somebody else, could come up and snipe Bo Nix from them, I'm of the mind, just stay there, take your guy, and be done with it. Um, We got Clayton Heron hopping in the room. Clayton saying, smash that like button. Yeah, I'm going to give an early warning out before the end of the show tonight. Smash that like button, guys. I see we have a lot of viewers on. It's still steady climbing. It's just me tonight. So if you appreciate the programming, it really does help out the uh, the podcast and the channel. Hit that like button. We appreciate it. Uh, String string Guy. I don't know why I always uh, see Stingray in my mind, but String Guy Zach, do you think Peyton let that slip about JJ because he wants May to fall? That could be the case. It, it is smokescreen season. It's so smoky in here. You need a gas mask, a la Laramie Tunsil. Bad joke aside, yeah, string guy, for sure. I mean, he could be trying to throw the scent off of uh, Drake May. He could be trying to throw the scent off of Bo Nix. That could be a possibility. I do think he likes Bo Nix to an extent. Um, or he could be bang, playing, um, being truthful, excuse me. Maybe he didn't realize he was letting it slip. Maybe he didn't care that it slipped. I don't know. I, I'd love to pick Sean Brayton, Peyton's mind and get inside his psyche, but it, it definitely could be a case where he's committing a smokescreen at the opportune time to get his guy. We just, there's so much speculation. That's why I've been saying as much fun as I have talking to each and every one of you, every single podcast about the draft. There's so much uncertainty that it's like, okay, just get here already. Let's get this over with and, and see who the Broncos end up with. All right, Cody Dub, $5 super. Appreciate you, Cody. I don't think JJ and Bo are far apart. A couple months ago, Bo was uh, over JJ. I don't care if it's either. Let's get a damn quarterback. Get this show started. I am right there with you, Cody. I mean, we could argue on the, the, the rankings and the levels to the quarterback class and whether JJ is better than Bo or vice versa. You ask me, I'll give you my honest opinion. I think JJ has a much higher ceiling whether it's with the Broncos or another team, I, as an NFL player, I think he has a higher ceiling. But if they end up with Bo Nix, I would be really, really happy about that. You know, I mean, you're talking about a guy who has been through many different coordinators, many different offenses. He's extremely coachable. I think he can run the Sean Payton offense to a T. And also his center at Oregon is now uh, in competition to be the Broncos starting center, Alex Forsyth. So yeah, Cody, I think we can agree on one thing. Get a quarterback on day one, no matter what. You got to come out of day one in the draft with Sean Payton's guy, whoever that may be. Um, what else? What else we got? Michaela's saying, Have Sean and JJ written their vows yet? That's pretty funny. We got Sam Bam, $10 super. So good to see you, Sam. He goes, Hi, hi, Zach. Hope you're doing well, man. Running the solo show. Appreciate that. I am doing well. Uh, me right now, my right now prediction is we trade up to eight to get McCarthy and the Vikings trade up to three with New England to get Drake May. Go Broncos. Again, I mean, listen, if they can move up for a quarterback, if they can come out of day one with J.J. McCarthy and not having surrendered PS2, I am ecstatic. I am a really happy guy covering the Broncos and what the Broncos future holds if that happens. But that's also predicated, obviously, Sam, on the Vikings moving up, not for JJ, but for Drake May. And that's also predicated on New England passing on Drake May. Again, there's there's so much uncertainty. There's so many different dominoes, dominoes that have to fall correctly for the Broncos to get someone in the top three or top four. But that's what makes it so exciting. And that's what makes these podcasts so fun to go over the different possibilities. Uh, what else? Barry McCockner. I know it's not the real Barry. Love your channel if it is, but Raiders connected to Michael Penix. Let him have Michael Penix. 
I, I've caught some flack on Twitter for never really including Penix in the big three discussion for the Broncos. I just don't think he's a fit for what Sean Payton wants to do. There's, there's a lot I do like about Michael Penix, but it's kind of outweighed by the uh, the stuff I don't like about him. And not saying I'm sharing a brain with Sean Payton. He's way smarter than me when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. Just my gut feeling, I just don't see Michael Penix in a Broncos uniform. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm going to keep scrolling, keep vamping, vamping, vamping. Jay Roper, what did you say, Zach? Pause. I don't know what I said. If it was pause worthy, you'll, I'm sure you guys will remind me. All right. I'm going to go through, take one last scroll through. I don't want to miss any supers for sure. I got Mike, got Michaela. All right. So I'm going to get to one other, um, uh, quote from Sean Payton about the Broncos quarterback situation. I don't know who asked the question, but I'm going to read the quote to you about not stressing over, not worrying about the Broncos quarterback situation. This is Sean Payton quote. I would rather the angst be now than in September and October. I think that we've got a pretty good plan in place. We understand what we're doing and we're going to be smart about it. End quote. You can interpret that several different ways. And this kind of ties into what Sean Payton said about uh, quarterbacks and evaluating them a couple weeks ago. I think it was at the combine actually, where he goes, you know, we're better than most other teams. I'm just paraphrasing there. He thinks they have a good plan and they're going to be smart about it. Now, smart is not overspending on Sam Darnold. Is that being smart and not reaching for a, a retread free agent quarterback? Or does being smart about it mean not giving up the future, not mortgaging your future to go into the top four for a McCarthy or a Drake may uh, this could be a smoke screen. I don't know. I think the truth in this sentence is that um, we understand what we're doing because again, Sean Payton thinks very highly of himself and he does have the credentials to back it up. Whether they're smart about it with what they end up doing, that is totally subjective and Broncos country will judge accordingly on the first night of the draft. I saw Michaela Duchess hopping in 499 super. Thank you again, Michaela. Sean, do you take JJ as your lawful wedded quarterback? JJ, do you take Sean as your overlord and master? Now I pronounce you coach and quarterback. That is actually pretty funny, Michaela. That's pretty clever. And listen, I, I know it sounds stupid now and kind of cringy now that Sean Pay Payton might be enamored with JJ. But listen, if he thinks JJ is the guy and he's right, and McCarthy leads the Broncos for the next 10 years as their no-doubt franchise quarterback, leads them back to the playoffs, leads them to maybe a Super Bowl or championship contention. I don't care how in love they are. They could go make the next 50 Shades of Grey movie for all I care. I just want the Broncos to finally have a young franchise quarterback to grow with. After eight years, that is all I want. I don't care how it comes about. I don't care about any of the means necessary to get it done. All I'm hoping for, needing, praying for, is that it gets done in the end. Cody Dub, another super appreciate you, Cody. Wasn't Rattler projected to be a first until his cockiness got in the way? He could be a sneaky pick with upside. Again, it's subjective, Cody, as to your evaluation of Rattler versus my evaluation of Rattler versus Sean Payton's evaluation of Rattler. We could have three uh, different opinions, and we probably do. I would, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was going to say I wouldn't be terribly sad if Spencer Rattler was the quarterback they came out of the draft with, but I would be sad. I would be disappointed. I mean, in a draft that has Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, JJ McCarthy, Bo Nix, you're going to miss out on all of them and get Spencer Rattler probably in the third or trade up in the second. And, and when you don't even have a second round pick, yeah, he was projected to be a higher draft pick. And as DVA says, he has grown up and matured for sure. I just want a little more of a blue chipper prospect. I, I just want a little more of a safer choice, a more coachable prospect, uh, someone that's an adult in the room from day one. I, I don't want any maturity concerns or any other in, intangible negatives that we have to worry about like we did with Jerry Judy. And this would be on a different level because he's the quarterback. But we all have our evaluations. 
if Sean Payton thinks that Rattler is worth selecting probably in the third or maybe in the second over a Bo Nix or McCarthy, I guess it's in Sean we trust. I guess we'll have to support it, but it definitely, Cody, is not my plan A. Uh, Chris, Chris Darrow. Hey, from Sudbury, Ontario, Sean Payton knows what he's doing. Chris, you sound like a new user or a newer user to the podcast. So if you are welcome, appreciate you hopping in all the way from Ontario up north, north of the border. Hope you're doing well this Monday evening. And you're right. Sean Payton does know what he's doing. And that's why I bit my tongue and I cringed and I I didn't want to say it, but I said it. If Sean Payton wants Spencer Rattler, I'll get behind it. Won't be easy, but I'll get behind it. Um, AJ, man, do you think the Broncos can pull off a trade to four if we trade PS2? Yeah, that's the only way you're going to get to four is if you include PS2 in a deal. And you look at the Cardinals, and they, and they can definitely use a, a, a superstar cornerback, especially with their head coach, Gannon, being a defensive mind. My only thing is you can't make the Cardinals trade you and move down to 12. If they want more than PS2 and multiple first round picks, the Broncos could simply say it's a bridge too far. And as much as we love Drake May or McCarthy, we're not going that high and giving up that much. But AJ, the only way, the only way, unless you surrender five consecutive first round picks, the only way you're getting to four is if you include PS2 in that deal. And even then, as crazy as it sounds, it might not be enough. Um... What else? What else? George Fox, great pod, Zach. Thanks for all you guys do for the fans. DB Pharrell, I appreciate you, George, and we love doing it. Again, it's no big deal whether it's one of us on here, two of us, whether we have a producer, no producer. It doesn't matter because I genuinely enjoy talking to each and every one of you talking Broncos. All right, Phil McLaughlin, one thing is for sure, if the Broncos and Peyton trade up, give away number one picks and maybe PS2 and miss, they will be run out of town. Yeah, you're right about that, Phil. It's... My preference is if Sean Payton loves a guy, go up, trade for him and get him. But if you trade up for him and you're, like you say, giving up PS2 and mortgaging the future again, coming off the Russell Wilson trade, coming off the Sean Payton trade, and Bo Nix or McCarthy turns into Paxton Lynch, yeah, that's going to cost Payton and Payton both their jobs. George Payton first. He would be the sacrificial lamb first. He'd be run out of town with pitchforks first. But after that, Sean Payton would have no more scapegoats and the arrows would be doing this constantly. So you're right. That's why when we said it after benching Russ and then cutting Russ, Sean Payton took a big gamble and put the onus on himself. He can't blame the quarterback anymore because the next quarterback is the one that he handpicks. And if he trades up to handpick his guy and the guy doesn't hit, oh boy, he'll be back to Fox in no time. Fox Sports, that is. All right, what else? <laughs> Short paid would be like Otani's interpreter. That's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. And you know what, BK, I don't think you'd be that too far off. Let's just hope, yeah, fall guy. Let's just hope that it doesn't get to that point. Let's hope and pray, please, God, after the Osweilers and the Lynches and the Drew Locks, please, 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 please let this quarterback be a hit. Please let the Broncos have their own Mahomes or Allen or Lamar Jackson or Burrow or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Please, please, please. I think we all deserve it by now. Wouldn't you guys agree? All right, let me go through. Uh, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna get to this as well. I kind of made a little uh, note section for the topics of the owner's meeting today that I wanted to talk about. Of course, of course, Russell Wilson comes up, as you'd expect. George Payton was asked about Russell Wilson, and he said, quote, we took a shot on a quarterback who's had a lot of success. It wasn't just Russ. There's a lot of contributing factors as to why we didn't win. At the end of the day, we didn't play good enough offense. We didn't win enough games. I'm accountable for that, end quote. Not much to really take out of that. It's a way to soft blame Russ without really blaming him too much. It's also a kind of echoes what um, Sean Payton said upon taking the Broncos job last year that there was, you know, faults going around. It wasn't just Russell Wilson. 
Uh, so he was right though. At the end of the day, they didn't do enough. They didn't win enough games and he's accountable because he made that trade. And, uh, with the help of the owners, he paid Russell Wilson that contract. So that's why I'm saying Sean, Sean Payton will be putting his neck on the line by trading up for a, a rookie quarterback, but the next guy to go, if there is a next guy is going to be George Payton and he knows it, man. All right. Sam Bam again, hopping in. Appreciate you so much, Sam. You are a rock star. There's a part of me that really wants JJ over Nick since JJ is 21 and Nick's is 24. But I have to remind myself that Breeze was 27 when he signed with New Orleans. What are your thoughts on my statement there? This is, it might be stupid. I mean, you're, there's some definite uh, truth to what you're saying. You obviously want your quarterback to be younger, have more time to grow, mature, not just as a football player, but also as an, a human being, as an adult, as a man. 21 is, uh, a baby still, and 24 is for that matter too. But what I was going to say, Sam, when Brandon Whedon came out and he was, what, 29 or 30 entering the draft, I remember reading the discourse about that. Like, yeah, the easy thing to say is if he doesn't bust, it's because he's old and the, they should have never taken a chance on him. But the inverse to that is what if he succeeded? What if he was the franchise quarterback? What if he won a Super Bowl or at least was not a bust? Is anyone talking about his age except the fact that I wish he was in the league longer? Not really. So, it, it, Sam, it all comes down to whether that quarterback has it or not, whether he is going to be successful in the NFL or not, whether he is going to thrive in a Peyton offense or not. And it, it, I'm sure it's an auxiliary concern, the age. You know, J.J. being three years younger, that is a plus for him. But if you can play, you can play. And if Sean Payton likes Bo Nix or likes McCarthy, I don't think the determining factor or the main reason is the age. It could be wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll put my hand up if I am. But it comes down to, is this guy it? Is he a franchise guy? And if it's Bo Nix even being three years older, so be it. All right. GLP, Gary Palmer, 999 Super. Thank you so much, Gary. You are a foundational member of the podcast. I hope you know that. Thanks for running solo, Zach. We can't trust what we hear, but keep trying. Listen, I'm just, I appreciate you, Gary. I'm just trying to pump out to you guys what's being said, and I'm not spinning it for you. I'm not making it more of a sunshine view or a negative view. I'm not trying to be a homer or see get you guys to see things my way i am putting it through a filter and giving you the no bs translation my opinion of what sean payton george payton what they're saying what i think they might be doing and again i've been wrong about the broncos a lot in the last couple of years i could be wrong again but i'm just gary i'll always give you my honest no bs a hundred percent genuine uh read into the situation BK999 Super, thank you so much, BK. Great job running the pod on your own. I like the fast pace of topics. I appreciate you, BK. It's a gift and a curse because Chad and I do like um, drilling down, or Scott and I like drilling down on one topic and, and interweaving the chat, but it's it's tough and it's fast paced when you're by yourself. But if anyone is around, and let me know in the comments, I'll take a second. If anyone around from the old Facebook Live 24 7 sports days where I would get on here, four, five, six nights a week and, and chat with you guys for an hour. It was always, I didn't have anybody else. It was just me. And I loved as well, the fast paced, boom, 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 kind of firing squad of questions. It's uh, I'm more of an upbeat, fast uh, tempo kind of guy. So appreciate you. Uh, what else? Zach doesn't bite his tongue. No, I'll never bite my tongue. And again, I know I'm, I'm not for everyone. And I, I saw a troll earlier say like you, you're being this or that to me. So again, I get that. You guys might have to take me with a grain of salt, but I love talking to you and I'll always give you my uh, my read into the Broncos. Uh, good to see you, Patrick. And uh, this is what we want, Zach. What everyone in Broncos country should want. I want to give Patrick a plug. Best coffee on the face of the earth. I am a coffee snob. Trust me. There's like two brands out of a hundred that I drink. My number one, Lion Coffee. Go to lioncoffee.com. This is not an ad read. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just really love Patrick's coffee out there in Hawaii, lioncoffee.com. Check it out if you like coffee. All right, let's, um, we're, what are we at? We're at 35 minutes. I think I have about 20, 25 more, whatever. We'll keep it uh, about an hour, 55 minutes tonight. So 
Let me know in the comments what your interpretation is now that we're about uh, the midway point of the show. What do you think about what Sean Payton said? What do you think about what George Payton said? What do you think the Broncos, as of March 25th, are going to do on day one of the draft or day two at the quarterback position? Let me know, and I will uh, try to get to the responses. Uh, Gary Palmer, that was aimed at me. Zach, I got you, Gary. It's all good, man. You are truly the best, and uh, we appreciate each and every contribution. And I, Again, I can speak for Chad and Scott when I say that. Thank you, Todd, for the nice words. I see that. Uh, AJ thinks Bo Nix is too old. The Ronk, Michael Ronquillo saying Bo Nix is my new favorite quarterback. And uh, we have Colin Wood saying, how will we get the pieces to put around this Superman JJ? And I don't know, Colin, it sounds like you're not a JJ fan, like your bias is coming out a little bit. Nowhere did I say that Superman is JJ and he shouldn't have to be. I, I, I get the point that you're trying to make. If you trade away all this capital and players, you're not giving the rookie quarterback, no matter who it is, a solid support system, and he needs that support system. So you're right. The thing is, though, I don't, I kind of feel like he has most of the pieces in place. If we're being honest, Colin, if you trade up for McCarthy, you'd be putting him in an offense, an offensive line that was pretty good last year. We might have to uh, downgrade a little at center, but maybe not with Alex Forsythe. But the rest of the four are solid, including Garrett Bowles. Javante Williams should look a little better in year two after the knee. Samaj is a great change of pace. You have McLaughlin. You probably are going to add to that room in the draft. At receiver, you're probably keeping Cortland Sutton. So there's your one. You have uh, Marvin Mims as your two, a breakout candidate. You have um, Tim Patrick coming back. We'll see what he does. Tight end, you have Dulcich hopefully staying healthy. My point in saying all of this, it's not like the Broncos were the uh, Texans before Stroud got there, and they, they were like a no man's land. They had nothing, no one. They do have some pieces. That's why they went eight and nine. That's why Sean Payton went on a winning streak with a quarterback that's breaking down and not a good fit for his system. The Broncos, Colin, aren't as bad, I think, I think, as a lot of people are making them out to be, as bad as their record might have indicated or some of the moves they're making has indicated. Am I saying they're a Super Bowl contending team in 2024? No. They're probably not going to even be a playoff contending team. They'll probably be in contention for a top five pick, more so than a championship. But I don't think they're as bare as you, Colin, or some other people are making them out to be either. And if you trade a one for um, McCarthy, you give up your 12 for McCarthy, and you're trading future picks, if you don't get into your three, okay, you have a three to address the offense or whatever. You have your four. You have your mid-round pick still. And this draft, in certain areas, including receiver and tight end, eh, kind of, you can get a solid contributor in the middle rounds. And the great thing about George Payton is he has an eye for middle and late round talent, a la Jaleel McLaughlin and uh, Jaquan McMillian. So he's not Superman Colin. The Broncos should not ask him to be Superman. But I don't think that if you trade up for McCarthy that you're going to have uh, the Denver McCarthy's, that you're not going to have any other pieces around him. I don't think they're that decrepit as uh, the, um, the implication is. All right, I don't want to uh, skip any supers. I see the argument in the comments about coffee. Scott Hansen, I don't know if that's the real Scott Hansen. Love your show every Sunday, Scott. Seven hours, commercial free football. Starbucks getting expensive. Yeah, Starbucks has been expensive. I'm not the biggest Starbucks fan anyway. I think they're really overrated, but lioncoffee.com, better than Starbucks. Check it out. Sam Bam, $5 super. Thank you. Again, Sam, you are amazing. My honest interpretation, there is no interpretation. Everyone knows the Broncos need a quarterback. Only Sean Payton and George Payton know if they plan on they plan to trade up or not. Yeah, I, I, we can continue, Sam, going back and forth, but it's, it's I don't know, verbal. I'm not going to say the expression. You know where I'm going there, but it, it's futile. It's, it's, it's a futile exercise to continue debating. Will they do this? Will they do that? Should they do this? Should, I, should they? It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think, Sam. It doesn't matter what literally, literally anyone anyone connected to the Broncos thinks except for one person. And that one person isn't even George Payton. That one person is Sean Payton. If George had it his way, Sam, he'd move down. He even kind of hinted at that today. He's either going to say a 12 or move down and get more picks. That's what he did in Minnesota. That's his bread and butter is stockpiling draft capital. If he had his way, he would a hundred percent move down from 12 and probably take Bo Nix or, or whoever, but it's, he doesn't have it his way. 
This isn't BK. This is Sean Payton's team. And if George Payton wants to move down and Sean Payton wants to move up, guess what the Broncos are doing? They're moving up. It's Sean Payton's decision. And like you said, though, Sam, we'll have to see what he ultimately decides on. Kathy Schmitty hopping in. So good to see you, Kathy. Hope you're doing okay. And I uh, hope you're having a good Monday. Hi, Zach. I would rather take Bo Nix to 12 if possible than trade up to probably four or five for JJ McCarthy. It's perfectly fine. I, I, again, it, Kathy, you, me, everyone else, we all have a difference of opinion on what the Broncos should do. Should they stay at 12? Should they trade up? Should they trade back? Should they get McCarthy? Should they get Nick? Should they get Drake May? None of us can agree on that, and none of us will agree on that. I think the one thing we all agree on, 99.99999% of us in Broncos country, is that they need a quarterback. Is that it doesn't matter whether it's a 12 or 4 or 6 or 8 or 25, whether it's JJ or May or, or uh, Knicks, they need a quarterback no matter what. You have to come out of day one with Sean Payton's guy, period, point blank, end of story. I think that is one opinion, I guess I'll say, that we can all share and all echo in Broncos country. Uh, Dave from Georgia, so good to see you, Dave. Thank you for hopping in. $10 super. Hey, Zach, Jittery Joe's in Atlanta's Georgia makes some pretty good coffee. My thoughts tonight are, am I really not? I am really not for any trade that includes PS2. Great solo run tonight. Appreciate you, Dave. And uh, I'll take your word for it. Never been to Athens, but I'm sure they have good coffee. All I know is what I can speak on. And I was a Kirkland fan, like the, the coffee you get at Costco. Lion Coffee is better. It craps on any other competitor. You can have Jittery Joe's. I'm sure it's great. I'm just speaking from experience. LionCoffee.com is great. And, you know, again, there's definitely two arguments to make, Dave. And I... I the last solo pod I was on, if you guys remember about a month ago, I made the argument for both for keeping PS2 and taking whoever at 12 or trading back or getting rid of PS2, not having to pay a hundred million dollar contract and moving him to get your QB. I totally, totally, totally get both sides. I get it. You ask me if Sean Payton says, listen, Zach, I'm, I'm the Broncos general manager or Dave, Dave, I am a hundred thousand percent convinced that Drake may or JJ McCarthy can lead the Broncos to a super bowl in 10 years, but we have to move up to four or six to get them. And you have to give up PS two in that deal. Dave, I don't think that you would uh, turn that down if you knew now we don't know, but we, all we can do is trust that Sean Payton has his eye on his guy and his guy will be a hit for the Broncos. But anyone who doesn't want to give up PS2, the only true superstar now in Denver, I totally understand that. Mike Edel, again, you guys are truly amazing. Mike Edel, $10 super. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Yes, they are. Have heard some rumors that the Bears are going to swap with Washington. I don't know. Again, this is all, it, it, there's so much speculation. There's so many rumors. There's so much smokescreen. You have to wade through this time of year. We don't know what's what. And I, for a majority of teams, they don't really know what they're going to do until the night of the draft when they're actually on the clock. I think only Chicago really knows what they want to do. But if this rumor is true, they don't even know. What I did hear though, Mike, I haven't heard this. I, I, I've been a little unplugged from the, the draft speculation today, but I did see that Washington now has entered the sweepstakes for, drumroll, J.J. McCarthy at number two. That's according to people familiar with Adam Peters thinking. Peters is the new GM in Washington, former Broncos exec. If Washington tr takes McCarthy at two, do you guys understand the chaos that would devolve from there? Do you guys understand that in that scenario, the Broncos could swoop in at some point and maybe land Drake May? Or Jaden Daniels, uh, it, it's crazy, Mike. But that's the latest I've heard. I, I still think Chicago's going to go Caleb at one. And I still think uh, Washington will go Jaden at two. But you, you never know. We won't know until we know. That's what makes this uh, so fun and so frustrating at the same damn time. All right, I'm going to scroll through some non-supers. Give you guys some shine. 
Uh, Joe Anthony said, I saw a report today saying they are the third worst team in the blank. I don't know about what ranking that was or whatever. I saw the Broncos win loss prediction for next year is at 5.5, which, okay. It's like, you're going to tell me the Broncos are bad next year. I'm not surprised. You're not breaking any news by telling me the Broncos are not going to have a good team, but if they go, did I say five, 5.5, 5. 5. 5. if they go five and 12 with a rookie quarterback, I I'm okay with that. I can take my lumps. But if you go 5-12 and 12 with Jared Stidham or Zach Wilson or whoever, that's unacceptable. And that is a waste of a season. It's not a waste if you're actually taking your lumps with a rookie quarterback and getting him the reps. If you're doing that with a Stidham or another retread, I'm going to be angry. And I'm sure you guys will be as well. Um, Zach with the bar. Um, what else? Sam, bam again, Sam, you are incredible, man. Sam, $5 super. Did you hear about the coffee cup that was attacked? It was mugged. Appreciate your dad humor, Sam. It's always a, that's always a good one. Riptie, $2 super late, but dropping in to give some love. Buckham, appreciate you, Riptie. I have fun interacting with you on Twitter or X or whatever they call it these days. So, um, good to see you on the podcast tonight. Um, I can't see Lawrence. Apparently you want me to, I'm, 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 I'm always in for a good conspiracy. You're, you're, you're barking up the right tree there, but I can't see the Facebook stars. So if, if to anyone, my apologies, I don't have the access to the stars while I'm solo tonight. So we will be sure to um, circle back on that and give you guys your just desserts on Thursday show when Scott's back with me, but we'll see what you said. Uh, said then Lawrence, maybe I'll have a rebuttal for you. Um, Mike Homner has anyone looked at uh, Sean's drafting record? Has he whiffed on everyone? Listen, everyone whiffs. No coach bats a thousand. I mean, the greatest quarterbacks of all time, they throw incompletions the, the, and interceptions. The greatest basketball players, they miss shots. No one is perfect. So yeah, Sean Payton's missed on a lot of players. I'm sure. I can't profess Mike to know every single player he took during his time in New Orleans. All I know is that 20... 17 class with Marshawn Lattimore, Ryan Ramtrick, Ramtrick, Trey Hendrickson, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing. Is that the Camara draft as well? I mean, they literally destroyed that Sean Payton and Mickey Loomis. I mean, that made the 2021 Broncos draft look like child's play. So Sean's drafting record, I'm sure, is comparable to a lot of coaches' drafting record. It's such an inexact science, and coaches tend to lean on their scouts and GMs and uh, those people a lot, but. He, it, it, when he was on in New Orleans in the draft, they were on. They got some talent consistently coming through that pipeline. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I'm just, all, I'm in it for the dad jokes tonight, string guy. Hey guys, did you hear about the two nuts that went into a bar? Yeah, one was assaulted. That's pretty funny. Um, what else? Zach is on fire. Appreciate you, Mike. The Ronk. Let me just scroll through my notes. I want to uh, not miss anything. Uh, I talked about the sacks. I talked about the uniforms. I talked about McCarthy workout. I talked about Russell Wilson. I think I pretty much got everything from the owners meetings today and we're at 48 and counting. So I'm going to wrap it up in about 10. If you guys have any last minute supers, comments, questions, considerations, criticisms, let me know in the chat. I'll circle back. I hate saying that, but. I will uh, run it back toward the end and see if I missed anyone or if I can answer anyone. Let me take one last scroll through here toward the top. I think I got all the supers. Did I get this one though? Here, here's a good one from Doug. This is what I, I started this for for uh, for now from earlier. Doug Tesler, who would Mini take Minnesota if JJ went to Washington? Well, the scuttle Doug is that it's not JJ who they have their eye on. It's that it's Drake May who they have their eye on. That's why they acquired that extra first round pick. That's why they're being so aggressive in replacing Kirk Cousins. Um, so I think it's definitely a quarterback if they don't, uh, if Washington does go McCarthy and, and throw a, a nuke on the draft, I would assume they're going to go quarterback. They have a good roster in Minnesota. They need some defensive help here and there, but their offense and, and maybe a running back, but their offense is set. Their offense has weapons, good offensive line, good receivers, obviously good tight end. So I think they go quarterback, Doug, and I think that would be Drake May in that scenario. 
Good question from Daniel Garcia here. Non super question. We like we like getting uh, some of the non supers and showing love to everyone. Zach, what's your non QB pick at twelve? It's so tough to talk about Daniel because I'm so dead set on a quarterback, and I, I'm not saying draft one for the sake of drafting one, but nothing else matters. Nothing, nothing the Broncos do matters. They can draft three first rounders. Uh, and it wouldn't be comparable to drafting one franchise quarterback. So it's tough thinking about this, but I will say if they don't go Q, I would like an edge rusher because you, you can't keep ignoring that. You you need an alpha there. You can't keep getting by with Band-Aid and duct tape. With the I love Jonathan Cooper as a backup, great workman-like player, but he's not a full-time starter, and they need more explosion off the edge opposite Baron Browning. Baron Browning, too, He's I, I wouldn't say he's an A-plus player. I think he's like an A minus solid B plus guy. You need an A plus edge rusher. You need an A plus defensive end opposite Zach Allen. Zach Allen was not good for a majority of last season. He turned it around toward the end, but he was not worth the money. You need someone else in that front seven to cause havoc. So if they don't go quarterback, I would like a um, uh, edge rusher. If they don't go edge rusher, I would like a defensive lineman. If they don't go defensive lineman, uh, Jared Verse, I'd be okay with that, I guess. They don't go off um, defensive lineman, maybe an offensive lineman, maybe Garrett Bowles' replacement, a younger, cheaper replacement, maybe someone like Joe Alt, and then you can trade Garrett Bowles and clear the uh, cap and pick up a draft pick. But it's so tough. It's like quarterback is here in terms of preference, and then everything else is down here. Everything, every other position. I, I And including, and, and lower than that, Brock Bowers or tight end. Uh, I'm a fan of Bowers. I think he'll be a good pro. He'd be a luxury move for the Broncos who are in no position to make luxury moves. The last thing they need is a tight end when they don't have a quarterback to throw him the ball. Cornerback CB. That's also lower uh, on my list. Again, Terry on Arnold, someone like that is uh, intriguing to pair with PS2, but nothing matters on offense or defense, Daniel, until you get that franchise quarterback. Um, I saw a super from Riptide, $5 super. Thank you, Riptide. I mean, Peyton drafted Michael Thomas in the second round. Let's hope Marvin hits his heart. We're all hoping that Marvin Mims takes that step forward. We saw flashes for sure. His deep speed, his, um, ability to, um, uh, track the ball when it's in the air. Great upside. If you can just make him consistent and not fumble. And I think too much was put on his plate as a rookie. He was trying to, um, pass up Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton and kind of carve his role in the Broncos offense. And it's not easy when your coach is Sean Payton. It's not easy when you have two veteran entrenched guys ahead of you. That's why I think the Broncos made absolutely the right decision trading Jerry Judy, not just because of the, the picks or the cap, but because you're giving your second round pick and Mims a chance to blossom. And that's all 2024 should be about, guys, is evaluating who you have and what they could be. And if they could be anything, if they're not it or if they're it, that's what 2024 is. I hate to say it. I'm not saying they're going to tank. I'm not saying you shouldn't watch, but it is mostly going to be an evaluation year for Sean Payton and company. And at the top of that list of evaluations, Marvin Mims, 100%. All right, we got Cody again. You guys are tremendous. Cody, Sam Bam, Gary, love all of you guys. $5 super. We should probably trust Sean. I remember Bridgewater when he played here. Sean made him look good in New Orleans. He did that for almost every quarterback uh, he's ever worked with. And that includes Russell Wilson. Say what you want about how it ended. But Russell Wilson was night and day better than what we saw under Nathaniel Hackett. His stats are actually pretty good. Didn't come out in the red zone. Didn't come out in the win-loss column. But Russell Wilson's stats were actually decent. And that's the Sean Payton effect. Sean Payton had that same effect with Trevor Simeon and Ian Book and Jameis Winston. That's why I'm saying, that's why I'm okay with giving up PS2 or making that move to the top four if Sean Payton signs off on it because we're not delivering an unknown prospect. We're not delivering a lock or a Lynch or an Osweiler to a unknown staff to a, a rookie or young coach with no pedigree and no resume. Sean Payton has a pedigree. Sean Payton has a resume. And that's why I want to get him a quarterback, his quarterback as soon as possible. Um, 
I, Esteban said, I'm not disputing that Esteban. I didn't say he didn't hate him. I'm saying that he made him a better quarterback. Obviously, he didn't dislike him or else he wouldn't have benched him and then cut him right after that. I'm sure he didn't like him to some extent. I don't think it was personal, whatever, but he made it work for a majority of last year. He made that offense work. And Russell Wilson's numbers, if you just compare them to other QBs and especially to Russell Wilson in 2022, it was night and day, night and day. All right, let me take one last scroll through here. Cody Doe, we got ripped eye, ripped eye. Okay. All right, guys, we have, I'm going to give it five more minutes. So last call, last call, questions, comments, supers. Yeah, Ian Book was terrible, but Jameis Winston wasn't under Peyton. And Trevor Simeon was And Book actually, you know, Book was always going to be terrible. He was terrible coming out. He's a terrible quarterback. I think he was a pretty bad prospect. But there were stretches that I've seen anyway. I could be wrong. There were stretches that I saw where he looked competent. He looked almost like Jake Browning running the Bengals offense after Burrow went down last season. If you could just make the worst quarterbacks look competent and you make the good quarterbacks look great and you make the mediocre quarterbacks look good, that's good coaching. That's that's all I want in Denver, and that's what the Broncos finally have now with Sean Payton. All right, I don't see any. We got Michael. Uh MHH is the best in the NFL covering the Broncos and the NFL go Broncos. You are the best, Michael. Appreciate you so, so much. Uh, the broken, I'll take one more from the broken pirates thoughts on bringing in second round quarterback in late rounds, Sam Hartman, for example, I'm of the mind that you should keep drafting quarterbacks until you find your guy. So even if they took Bo Nix to 12, I would not at all, uh, be mad if the Broncos threw a flyer at a Hartman or whoever, because again, you're not just looking for a starter. You're looking for a backup or a practice squad guy to compete with Ben DiNucci. So if Hartman is brought in for that reason, the, the more QBs, the better. Draft him until you find that franchise guy. I don't care who it is. Um, Again, another appreciate you string guys so much. And yeah, it's not that I've earned it. I, I love holding it down for you. It's that it's good for the channel. It's good for the brand. It really does um, help us out dropping that like. It takes two seconds. It's free. Uh, and we appreciate each and every one of you that do it. Just hit the like button if you haven't already. Uh, Viper. How do you feel about Bo Nix as a prospect? I feel like he's a safer. I feel like he has a, a higher floor than McCarthy, but McCarthy has a higher ceiling. That, that's kind of my read on Nix. I, 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 again, he's very coachable. He went through a ton of change, two different schools, uh, OC changes, different playbooks. He's grown a lot since his time at Auburn during, during his time at Oregon. And he plays in structure. He doesn't have the biggest wow factor with an arm or uh, athleticism, mobility. There's some warts to his game, as with any other player, J.J., Drake, May, Caleb Williams included. I just think he's the one that can best keep the Sean Payton offense on schedule, play within the confines of a Payton offense. And if there's one thing that I've learned over the last year, one thing about Sean Payton, one thing about what Sean Payton wants in his next quarterback, it is someone that can stay on schedule, someone that doesn't take sacks like he talked about, someone that doesn't turn the ball over, and that could just play in the confines of the system, can make the throws and 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 help the team move the ball and score points. It doesn't always have to be a moon ball ESPN you know, top 10 highlight. It, you have to just be consistent, be reliable, know the playbook, and do your job. And that's what Bo Nix epitomizes to me as a prospect. And that's why I think Sean Payton's higher on him than uh, some of you guys in Broncos country. And yeah, that's what I'm saying here. DVA, the, the safer play, it is the safer play. Again, you have a, probably a higher ceiling with McCarthy. And if I had it, if it was a choice left to me, I take McCarthy over Nick's, but Nick's is a little bit safer from day one. And, um, and it's true, Viper. He does process the game very quick. Yeah, you want that between the ears. It's one thing to have the rocket arm, and it's one thing to have the, the height of like a Paxton Lynch, but it, it means nothing if you're, and I mean this relatively speaking, if you're dumb at playing in the quarterback position. If you don't have it between the ears, if you can't process, if you're not a supercomputer like Peyton Manning. Peyton never had the strongest arm in the world. It was, it was a good enough arm, but it's between here that made him uh, what he is today and what he was in the NFL. All right. I think that's going to do it though. I don't see any more supers. I don't think I missed any. And again, if I missed any stars today, any questions, uh, any of you guys 
my apologies. It's it's tough. It comes in hot and heavy. I don't have a producer, no Scott, no Chad. So we'll sir, not gonna say we'll get back to you Thursday night if I missed any one of you, and I'll talk more Broncos and get your questions specifically. But that is gonna do it for the podcast this evening. If you haven't done so, please follow us on Twitter at the MHH Pod. You can follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. I'm on Twitter at Kelberman NFL. Also be sure to follow Scott at Scout Kennedy and Chad at Chad and Jensen. If you guys haven't, check out our merch store at MHHmerch.com and get your swag on. If you please drop us a like at facebook.com slash mile high huddle pod. I feel like most of you have done that already, but if you haven't, please drop us a like there. You can find us on Insta at mile underscore high underscore huddle. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're leaving your football pre a five-star review for a chance to win some of that merch each and every single month. But if anything, y'all, guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans just like you. One of these days, I'm going to have you guys do that with me, my little spiel. You guys have heard it. Uh, enough by now but again i don't have the we wouldn't do the rundown of all the um the supers and the stars i'm gonna give a quick shout out to the to the names that i can see from my end again we'll we'll uh get back to you guys on thursday but uh doug michaela mike edel dtr cody dub sam bam michaela again cody sam bk gary palmer uh ripped eye you guys are, that's just the super. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, Dylan, for moderating. Thank you guys for the questions. I can't believe an hour has flown by. I just clicked go live and it's already been over an hour. You guys make this fun regardless of whether it's solo or whether it's both of us, uh, me and a co-host. But that's going to do it for me tonight. Uh, tomorrow, look, be on the lookout. I don't know. I don't know if Broncos for Breakfast is um, going to be on tomorrow morning. But you have Building the Broncos tomorrow night. You have Mile High Insiders Wednesday. BFB should be back on Thursday. And then Scott and I will be back in the saddle for the MHS podcast Thursday night. Have a great start to your week. A great rest of your Monday. Take care. And as always, go Broncos.